Yes, it's only November, but don't be a Grinch. So guys, it is only November, but it's not too early, especially if you're gonna be selling signs, if you need Christmas gifts and stuff, get your designs ready, get everything kind of going a little bit early. Why do you think Target and Walmart and all those things, as soon as Halloween's over, Christmas stuff is in the aisles. So for this little sign today, we are using our template of the month for November of 2024. This is the Grinch Smile. And we're also using our inch and a half fatty font. Now this font is easy to carve, inset or outset, and I think it goes really well with Christmas designs. So that's what we're doing today. And if you guys don't know, templates of the month and stencils of the month, those are actually free for our premium and executive members. And if you wanna check that out, I'll leave a link in the description below so you can head over to the website and kind of see what's all involved in that. So if you haven't subscribed yet, guys, we'd really appreciate it. It helps us kind of get our stuff out there and helps the algorithm show it to more people. So hit that like button, hit subscribe. Let's get started. For this sign, we used a 24 inch piece of one by six blue pine. Now this stuff we get at Home Depot or Lowe's, it's just shiplap blue pine, and it's pretty inexpensive. I think an eight foot board is like 12 or 15 bucks, and this stuff carves great. I like this way better than the select pine or even the cedar pickets. So when you only have one template and you want it on both sides, you just wanna make sure and mark where you want that template to be so you get even spacing on the left and the right. Now, the biggest thing when you're laying out a sign is even spacing, unless you're doing something kind of random, but that doesn't happen all that often. So I put two inches from the template to each side of the board, and then I drew my lines for my wording. Now, I wanted two lines on this, so you gotta make sure that you leave enough space in between the two lines if these are gonna be outset, and also around it for the cloud. But one of the biggest things that people forget is the apostrophe between the N and the T. So notice it's a little bit squeezed together, but I had to have enough space for that apostrophe because I'm doing this outset. Now apostrophes are like my Achilles heel. I really suck at drawing these things. We do have an apostrophe pack, I just forgot to use it. The first bit I'm using is our carving liner at an eighth of an inch deep. Now this thing is perfect for doing this Grinch smile template. You might be able to get away with using the profile bit, but the carving liner is really the way to go. Now one thing to remember is that when we make templates, we have to add some lines. Kind of think of like military stenciling. You can leave the lines or you can carve through them. On the first Grinch smile that I did, I actually left the line on the left eye and I carved through it on the right. Luckily, I caught that before I finished the whole sign up, but you wanna make sure that both sides look the same. So whether you leave it or you carve through it, just make sure you do it on both of them. There's a couple lines on this template that are real easy to forget. Like for instance, the bottom of the top lip, there's a little tiny line that goes up. On the first one I did, I actually forgot that, then I caught it on the second one. So you just wanna make sure to pay attention to what exactly the layout looks like. Some layouts go better, some layouts are a little bit more difficult. Just don't get in too much of a hurry and you'll be all right. The next bit I'm using is the profile bit at 3 16ths of an inch deep. Now, I'm gonna go around the outside of each one of the Grinch templates, and this is to give me a, a line to follow when I go back with my 90 degree. You don't have to do that, but it really does kind of add a little bit extra. It kind of makes more of a contrast between the template and the board itself. If you try to do it using only the 90, it's really kind of difficult to keep that line where you want it. Also, I widen the smile of the Grinch a little bit. I don't know if that's 100% necessary, but when you have just a single line with a carving liner, it can be difficult to get the spray down in there. So if you can make it a little bit wider, I think that helps a lot with the overall look of the sign. Now I'm gonna do my outset letters, and I'm gonna start off the same depth I did around the Grinch smile, which is 3 16 of an inch deep. Now some people don't really like outset, but some people don't really like inset. 
Usually when I'm selling signs, unless it's a stock sign, then I just make a bunch of them and people hand me money, I give them a sign. But if I'm doing something custom, I give them the option. And there's not a whole lot of signs that you can do inset, but you can't do outset. It has more to do with the size of the board because you do need a little bit more room. But I think outset looks a lot better. One popular question we get a lot is how long do your router bits stay sharp? And there's a lot of variables in that. So for this, we're using that blue pine. That's not near as rough on the router bits as say oak or cherry or any type of hardwood really. I kind of use the general rule of 15 to 20 normal size house signs, like something like this. And they will stay sharper longer if you clean them in between signs which all you really need to do is take a little brass wire brush and clean off all the residue on your router bits after you're done carving for the day. Or if you have a real long day carving, then after you're done carving each sign. That's gonna extend the life of your bits a lot. You'll be surprised. Now once I have my initial outline done at 3 16ths of an inch deep, I'm gonna go back around all of my carving inside the lettering at a quarter of an inch deep to give myself plenty of room to get in there with a 90 degree bit, make my cloud, and take out the remainder of the wood. For the 90 degree bit, I went at a quarter of an inch deep just right off the bat. Now I'm gonna go around each one of the Grinch templates and I'm gonna make that fat, bold line I was talking about earlier. Again, it's not 100% necessary, but it adds a lot of contrast and it makes it a lot easier to color when you're painting or using Sharpies without getting that color on the outside of the template where you really don't want it because that stuff doesn't sand off all that great. Now I'm gonna go around my lettering. Now the biggest thing about this is you still need room to do a chamfer or whatever edge you're gonna do. That's one of the reasons when I did my layout, I put them a little bit close together. So there's plenty of room to carve in between them, plenty of room to go around them, and there's also plenty of room to do whatever type of edge I wanna do on there. Something that grandpa told me years ago is once you get your cloud made, do all the stuff inside the cloud first because even though you would think it sticks out like a sore thumb, after you're looking at a sign for a while, it kind of all blends. So work from the inside out and you'll be sure to get everything. Now this is just a nice little Christmas sign, so I'm gonna round the corners to give it kind of a soft look. And to do that, we use our disc sander and we just kind of round them. They don't have to be perfect, at least in our opinion they don't, especially if you're working for time, if you got a bunch of orders you gotta get out. That whole process only took about 45 to 60 seconds. That's a little faster than I am. Now we're gonna use the 45 degree chamfer bit and I'm gonna put a small chamfer on the back and I'm gonna put a bigger chamfer on the front. Again, you can do whatever kind of edge you want, but when it comes to like uh, stock signs, like something like this that I can make 15 or 20 of them, I like to do just as simple as possible. It still looks really nice and it's a good quality product, but I can knock them out pretty quick. Now I'm gonna use our black primer and I'm gonna spray everything black. This is pine, so you wanna be careful not to over spray. You don't want any puddling but you want to get everything down there nice and dark so you can see the contrast. Once it dries, which only takes a couple of minutes, then I'm going to sand it off with an 80 grit disc on the disc sander and a 120 grit disc on the random orbital. And I make sure to blow it off in between each one of those sanding processes to keep from grinding sawdust back into my board. Now I'm using a green Sharpie to color this sign. If you're gonna do that, it does last a while, especially if it's an indoor sign, but make sure you do it before you do your finish. That way it can soak into the board and the finish will actually protect that color and keep it looking good for usually a couple of years indoors. If it's outdoors, eh, it doesn't last quite as long. Then we use our Rust-Oleum Clear and I put one coat on camera and then I put about four or five more just to give it a nice glossy finish.
So there it is, you guys. I really like it, but it might be a bit too much green. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I know color attracts the eyes, color brings people, like if you're selling on site, they see color, they kind of go to it, but might be a bit too much, I'm not sure. Anyway guys, remember, it's only November, but it's never too early to start celebrating Christmas, especially if you're selling signs, Get a bunch of styles ready, get a bunch of designs ready, get them out there for people to see. That way they can buy it before Christmas Day. As always, guys, everything we use today is on the website, makeawoodsign.com, and there will be links in the description below. If you have any questions, shoot me an email, ryan at makeawoodsign.com, and we'll see you guys on the next one.